introduce our next speaker. I worked with uh, Catherine for a couple years at the hospital uh, when I was working there, and she's such a delight and has a very good approach to the subject of diabetes. So I think you're going to be really interested in this this evening. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about Catherine. Uh, Catherine Messenger is a registered nurse from Wyoming. She has a background in critical care and neuroscience, so she's super smart. Uh, she is currently the director of the Porter Heart and Vascular Center and previously served as the Diabetes Center Coordinator at Fairbanks Memorial Hospital. Catherine has a passion for preventing chronic disease. She definitely understands the connection between lifestyle choices and health outcomes. And she enjoys influencing the healthy decisions today that prevent medical issues tomorrow, such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and obesity. She obtained her nursing degree from Casper College and her master's in the science of nursing through Walden University. She's dedicated to the care of her patients, residents, and community. She's a strong proponent um, that the decisions made today affect the decisions made tomorrow. In fact, she embodies that belief by staying active with her family, by hiking, mountain biking, running, and gardening. So please help me welcome Catherine Messenger. Thank you, Tiffany. Is this on? Can you hear me? Thumbs up in the back. Okay, great. So speaking of biking, hiking, and all that jazz, I just have to point out my friend sitting in the back row. Like this. Good. Okay, here we go. Anyway, my friend sitting in the back row, her and I just got done hiking the Pinnell Trail. I think we can say, Woo! Woo! But anyway, so we're here to talk about um, diabetes, and more importantly, the stop sugarcoating diabetes. Hold on, am I holding this right? Yeah, All right, here we go. One way or the other, because these are the, um, the monitors and the computers. Are you saying I'm short? No, I'm <laughs> saying I can't see you over the computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's super cool that I get to look at my own slide and look at you guys, and I'm not like, and next we have, <laughs> anyway, so I came from Wyoming. I grew up on a ranch. My parents were fond of childhood labor. Yeah, we got up at 5 a.m. to buck hay. We also ate a very big meal, steak, potatoes, the apple pie, everything, but in this lecture, I'm just going to talk about like how lifestyles have changed over the years. Because my kids, they don't have the same chores. They clean the cat box and do the dishes. There's no fucking hay. Anyway, um, let me tell you a little bit about my addiction. My girlfriends in the back have heard about my addiction to Twizzlers. It's a serious problem. And even Fred Meyer is on to me because Fred Meyer sends me coupons. Two for one. Yeah, you buy two. And I don't buy, like, the little candy size. No. No, I like the big package, and I like the cherry twist ones, the strawberry, the black licorice, the kind that has the little juicy in the middle. Those are really good, too. And I just don't, you know, I'm afraid that they're going to go stale. So I have to eat the whole package that night as I watch TV or read a good juicy book like Fifty Shades of Grey or something like that. And then after that, I'm completely satisfied until the next night at 9, or 9 p.m. So there's my problem. And Fred Meyer knows about it. They send me coupons. So some of the objectives we're going to go over. We're going to go over the physiology of energy, sources of energy, um, metabolism, um, the food industry. And then the decisions we made today affect the decisions we make tomorrow. So <clears throat> a little bit about the human physiology and energy. So as, it, as we all know, we need fuel. And we get fuel. We get fuel from food. We eat food, and then we breathe air. They make this great 
metabolism and we have energy. Um, our body needs energy to, for muscles, um, for digestion, circulation, and breathing. Um, our cells are the energy producers. Our cells um, <coughs> extract energy from foods and using the oxygen. Here we have our chemical reaction and the metabolism. Make sense? You're already falling asleep on me. Don't fall asleep. Okay. So that's pretty boring. <coughs> but it's very important. And all of this, I will promise you, will we'll get to the diabetes after I flip my page of notes. So diabetes inhibits the metabolism process. It prevents the glucose from crossing over the cellular barrier so no glucose in the cell equals no energy. So my friend Jen, she didn't eat her granola bar, or she ate her granola bar, but somehow she did not have the energy needed for the second day. It was a slower day. I'm just saying, that really had nothing to do with diabetes, but the process is you need energy. Oh, and the altitude, so she had less oxygen to process, to get over the mountains to get the food. Anyway, anyway, we need the glucose in the cells. If we don't have a way of getting the glucose from our bloodstream into the cells, then we can't have the energy to run the marathon or hike the Pinnell Trail. Carbohydrates. Um, our bodies prefer this source of energy. And just like Twizzlers, we love this source of energy. Our favorites, breads, chocolates, all full of carbohydrates. Chains of sugars made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So sources of carbohydrates, we have some in plants, grains, rice, potatoes are some of them. Um, carbohydrates are utilized for our bodies. Um, they are preferred over protein and fats. So, and if you think about it, what is our best habit? We get hungry, we're reaching for the Cracker Box, or we're hungry for the French fries, right? What's your favorite? Carrots. Oh. Well, yeah, yeah. That's a starchy one. But at least that's better than the crackers. Um, excess carbohydrates. So what do we do with those? Excess carbohydrates are stored in, in our fat and liver cells with the utilization of insulin. And we'll get to know insulin. Insulin is one of our favorite hormones. Um, glucose is the sugar that is the foundation of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are broken down into sugar by, digest, by our digestive tract and the, the liver that enter the, the cells. So that gets really complicated because then we start talking about the pancreas and the beta cells and all that. But decrease in the blood glucose causes the hunger. The hungry feelings, Jen, the sweat, <laughs> the um, grouchiness. Anyway, moving on. Um, other sources of energy. So we have lipids or fats. Sources both in animals and plants. Um, carbohydrates are converted into fat via the liver. We just talked about that. And the liver is like an amazing organism here, or organ. It could probably be an organism as well. Fats are also stored in the liver and the adipose tissues a.k.a. our love handles. Um, saturated fats, which is rising from cholesterol, and unsaturated fats, which is the decrease in cholesterol. So we really, when we're focusing on our fat content, um, if we focus on unsaturated fat versus fat. Um, cholesterol. So this is where I get, do you go to your primary care physician and you're like, you know, which one's the good one? So low density is bad. Like it causes, and, and this is going to make your cardiologist excited. So if you realize you, you go and you say the LDL is a bad one, your cardiologist will be happy. Um, HDL, high density. This is your good cholesterol. It reduces the risk for arthroscope. Too much fat increases our love handles and we get weight gain. We know that, that's like common sense. 
other sources of energy. So protein. How many people remember Dr. Atkins? Okay. Anyway, sources of protein. So animal and plant, we have beans, nuts, and meat. I think he was like a favorite of steak or something. Protein is essential for growth, formation of our body tissues, immunity, and blood clotting. Um, the amazing liver, the liver can convert protein into energy. Protein is the energy conversion after carbohydrates and fat energy has been exhausted. So our body prefers carbohydrates, then fat, then protein. So Dr. Atkins, he would say, let's just eat meat or protein and fat. So have your bacon and eggs every morning, right? <laughs> but the reality is, is we really do need carbohydrates. So the metabolism of carbohydrates, fat for energy, and fat for energy. The body switches metabolizing carbohydrates to fat and fat for energy. <clears throat> shortly after eating, the body, shortly, shortly after eating, Sorry, the body metabolizes the carbohydrates. Fasting, eight to 10 hours, the body starts metabolizing the carbohydrates. Exercising, depending on intensity level, um, metabolizes carbohydrates and fat. Before the fat, before the meal, the car okay, this is like where you need to consult your dietitian. <laughs> but before the meal, the metabolizing of the fat and then the carbohydrates. It's kind of tricky here, but this is where it comes into we're testing your glucose two hours after you eat something versus right after you eat something and the level of accuracy that you're going to get. Diabetes pre uh, prevents energy and, and uh, energy production. So the mechanism for the insulin that is released in a normal pancreatic beta cell this is the boring part. You're falling asleep again on me. <laughs> um, the beta cell, <clears throat> the insulin production is more or less than the beta cell is w within the beta cell. It releases the trigger by food, chiefly food that containing absorbed glucose. Um, diabetes type 2, the mechanism is essentially broken. So fatigue sets in, uncontrolled hunger, and then weight gain. And we like, it's like the trigger doesn't happen. So we eat the whole bag of Twizzlers. Um, so if we can equal say, say that diabetes is like your toxic blood. <clears throat> Uncontrolled or chronically high levels of glucose in the circulatory system becomes toxic and the body tries to compensate. But over time, the damage will occur. So this is where you're going to have the cardiovascular disease. You're going to have the nerve damage, the kidney damage, your eye damage, your foot damage. And we'll talk about some of these. But your skin doesn't heal. You become your little vessels in your ears and stuff, hearing impaired. And believe it or not, there's a huge link from diabetes to Alzheimer's disease. The balancing act. I don't care. All your friends that say, you got the diabetes, so stop eating carbohydrates. Or it's not that easy. Your body still needs carbohydrates to function. Your brain needs it. The more uh, mechanism is <clears throat> basically the mechanism is disabled to properly break down the carbohydrates. So now you have to rely on yourself for self monitoring and your blood glucose. Um, you become dependent on self. Um, administering insulin, and then you're confused on what to eat, when to eat it, how to eat it, and then trust me, everybody in your neighbor has a recommendation. So the food industry, we love them. This all started during World War II. What happened during World War II is we started doing a lot of packaging and processing of food for our soldiers. So they would like have, I want to say it was like 3,900 calories a day. 
something like that. Increasing, it was amazing. It was a lot. Hold on, I have it in my notes. Um, and then on top of that, we had oh yeah, 3,900 calories. Um, and then on top of that, we had the accessibility, the prepackaging, the suburban lifestyle, the supermarkets, and later came along the loaf and jug. What is it here? Holiday, right. <laughs> Convenience stores and all of this cheap processed food. Um, the food industry, um, the abundance of this cheap ingredients and stimulated the growth of the food industry and then also made it financially incentive for the KFCs and the McDonald's and stuff like that. But it also helps the farmers use the coin and the soy products, and they use the fr fructose, the hydrated or um, hydrogenated oils, um, and corn starches. So this frequently high food, easy accessible, not to mention we're all working families, and now it's pretty much two parents working and you have to go home and cook a meal, so it's almost easier if we just um, go through the drive through right? So as these come about, most of the fruits and vegetables and the substance, they are also more labor intensive to grow and harvest and, and perish quickly. And so this made it less profitable for companies and over the um, over the years, we started seeing more, oops, sorry, there you go, um, more processed stuff because it was cheaper and it lasts longer on the shelves. So technology and innovative innovators in food processing and food packaging and food preparation allowed us to consume a wide variety of foods that was easy to cook, easy to clean up, and um, but it was lacking a lot of nutrition. So processed food, um, high in fat, high in sugar, they taste great. So the neural aspect is, is your frontal lobe gets really excited and wants to eat more. Um, they taste great. Um, the science, and, and there's a lot of science involved in this. I have a whole Cheetos thing. You know how the Cheeto is very airy and fluffy? Well, I guess you can get the crunchy or the the airy ones, but this is a manipulative effect on you. So you think that you're eating one Cheerio, or Cheerio, Cheeto, and you're thinking that you're not getting very much substance because it's just air. But in reality, it's very highly dense fat and glucose and all of that stuff mixed up together. And then you eat the whole bag before you know it because really you thought it was not that much. Your mind, it tricks you. And then you buy another bag. Cheetos are evil. <laughs> They're right up there with Twizzlers. But anyway, so but this did come in a time when like food was scarce. Um, this was a way to deliver um, food to people that we need to for high calories and stuff like that. So it does have, a, it, it is good. So. But it's not good for us right now when we do have the ability to pick our vegetables and eat our eat more less processed food. And so, what about diabetes? So the choices that we made today affect the choices we made tomorrow. And this is where we get down and dirty and talk about what we do today so that we don't have to worry about tomorrow in dialysis machines and our cardiologists and um, the whole health care thing. So take action. So take your medications for diabetes as your health um, and any other health problems even when you feel good. Check your feet every day for cuts, blisters, red spots, swelling, and call your health care team right away about any sores or anything that don't go away. Um, brush your teeth, floss every day. Okay, 
I go to the dentist, and he always tells me I'm not flossing. I swear I floss. Anybody else? Do you floss? Colleen flosses. <laughs> but anyway, and I know checking your feet sometimes becomes cum cumbersome. Um, but we really do because as if you have diabetes, you know you have the neuropathy setting in. You can't always feel if you step on that Lego. Well, most of us will feel the Lego or stub the toe or whatever that we have to get with our feet. Taking responsibility. Stop smoking. Keep on track with your blood sugar. You may want to check them uh, more times during that day, especially if you're sick. You know, maybe you should check it more often. Um, log it. Your health care team will love it. Um, and then talk with it, any concerns that you have with your health care team. Um, check your blood pressure on a regular basis. Um, eat well. Make um, a diabetes meal plan. How many know what a diabetes meal plan is? It's like so vague. We, we, everybody's like, yeah, just, just do it. Choose your foods that are low in calories, saturated fat, trans fat, sugars, and salt. Eat foods that are more high in fiber, such as whole grains, cereals, breads, crackers, rice, and pasta. Choose foods such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, breads, cereals, and low-fat skim milk or cheese. And drink water instead of juice and milk. Um, this great dietitian I know that may be in the room, if you can read the ingredients on the back of the label, you have a good start. If the words are too big or you have no idea, it sounds like a chemistry, just avoid it. If it's grown in a garden, it's better <laughs> than, you know, um, getting the chips with the – go for the potatoes instead of the chips, I guess is what I'm saying. The more natural. So eat well. So I, I totally stole this picture. Actually, I stole this picture off the Internet, but it's a good example. Um, you want half of your plate and not a huge plate. Go with like a six-inch plate in diameter or a salad plate. And here's the theory. This is all psychology as well because the fuller you make that plate that's small, the more satisfied you will be. Half of it should be fruits and vegetables. The other quarter should be grains and a quarter should be protein. And oh, a couple dairy, I think, is what that is. Stick with natural foods, though. Stick with stuff that hasn't been processed highly. Um, stick with your vegetables, your fruit. Be active, set a goal. We hike the Pinnell Trail. Um, Set a goal for activity most days of the week. Um, start slow, 10-minute walk three times a day, twice a week. Work your increase or increase your workout, muscle strength, stretch your arm band, do arm bands, yoga, gardening, whatever. Um, the biggest take-home message that I'm reading in the literature, though, lately is it's not going to the gym and sweating for a good hour on the treadmill. It's really actually being active throughout the day. How many times? So, how many times do you get up from your desk? You walk the stairs. You do. You you go and talk to a friend instead of messaging them or um, calling them on the phone. That the activity that you do through the day is more beneficial for your body than spending an hour at the gym, sweating your heart out because then you go home and you're fatigued. And in the long run, now theoretically you could do both. And you'd be good. And stay at a healthy weight or have a developed plan to get to that healthy weight. And this is where you're really going to want to talk to your healthcare team to see where your healthy weight should be at. Um, a good start is your BMI or your body mass index. And I really went fast, so we have lots of time for questions. Uh, it's a way to keep track of your glucose 
24-7. And if that's the case, how long before this goes to an app, say, where you keep track of what you eat and then you, you understand your, your physiology, specifically what you're planning, because like my mother, she brought me to eat. She mm -hmm. spiked all the time, has no idea why. I'm trying to be tough. What I want to know is specific. This is what I eat. This is the time I eat. This is my gastronomic process. This is 24-7 my glucose. What's the relationship? Should I skip the triples? Should I skip the you know carrots? What's causing this? So can you elaborate on that? So yeah, actually, te technology is is there's so many things. There's apps out there. There's actually um, and really when we look into um, Type one. So I didn't really go into type one and type two, and um, but a lot of our youth are, that are type one are using um, pumps, and with those pumps, they're, they're able to actually monitor their glucose, and then they can log exactly when they're up or down. Now I am sure I haven't heard of the um, Europe and and having the little implant, but I am sure that it is possible that you have one that could actually regulate your or could record your blood sugar all the time and so you would know just you got a mini mini hair going through your skin that's it yeah well no i i totally believe it's possible <laughs> anyway and and the thing is is you can you can who who was that that came and did a talk at the expo a couple years ago I don't remember his name either. Anyway, he did a study, and he's a type 1 diabetic, but he did a study on his blood sugar and the spikes and peaks and developed this whole diet plan, which was crazy, but he knew exactly what foods would spike his blood sugar and what foods didn't. And I think that, you know, even though if you had the implant or the little hair that you were talking about, you could totally tell. Um, right now, you know, we tell our we we tell our patients check your blood sugar often, and and they're pricking their finger, but the strips cost a lot, and the Medicare only covers so many strips, or or the VA or whatever your third party is. So it's really hard to really do a self study on what are my spiking my blood sugars. Um, but we kind of know that because carbohydrates are immediate energy source, that that's going to spike your blood sugar. So when we think about the type of carbohydrates that we're having, is it the complex or the simple? We know that the simples are going to be the ones that are going to spike them higher. Um, but other than that, we should, um, I guess we have, a, we have a background, but I don't know exactly how to say that multiple people have done this study, but they haven't really have the technology. There's tons of apps. A lot of type 1 people use them, but I don't know if I'm answering your question. <laughs> Next time. Next time. <laughs> around and around the tree we go. <laughs> the technology is there. Yes? How do you feel about uh, perhaps a tax on sugar in particular for particularly for children in high school? And it still seems to be a diabetes. Well, it's, yeah, it's like what our, our frontal lobe gets excited about. And so it's it's the sugar, it's the, um, even some of the, there's scientists in the laboratory who are really making up all of these things and saying, how can I get you to eat more? Um, it's the Cheeto people. Um, but you're right. Um, I would love it if they tax sugar because then maybe all the potholes in Fairbanks would get fixed. I don't know. <laughs> but I understand um, we've done tons of studies where we're like, if we remove the soda drinks out of the schools, if we remove, if we put in a vending machines that delivered apples, if we um, put in, um, 
if we educate people to eat fruits and vegetables and avoid the high processed foods. But the reality is, is our culture is at this point where we are not satisfied unless we have this full plate. We're not satisfied unless we have all these carbos, carbohydrates, the sugars, the fats. We're just not accustomed to it. I think even taxing it, um, they would still buy it because it's so addictive and so even more expensive. I think really what it's going to do, though, um, if you look at the economical status and the for, like Top Ramen, call, every college student probably has lived off of Top Ramen for a while. But that's because they're cheap and affordable and filling. And so <laughs> um, if you think about it, a lot of our um, government subsidized programs um, say, how many Top Ramens can I buy with my food stamps compared to how many apples can I buy with my food stamps? So I, I like your idea for taxing, and I know it's been something that has been talked about, but I almost think that we have to turn around and say, how can we support our people to make healthier decisions? Maybe food stamps only buy apples and, you know, meat and vegetables and whole grains. Or for our kids, you know, if you go on WIC, you get um, cereal, but you can get, but you can choose to buy the Cheerios, or you can choose to buy the fruity pebbles. And we all know our kids will eat the fruity pebbles because they're full of sugar. Well, there's a multiple factors, and you're exactly right, because type 2 diabetes is getting in, uh, younger and younger kids, adolescents. We have overweight, obesity. It's, you know, um, it's amazing. And it is, it's leading to the, you know, pack, prepackaged, the easy accessible, the food items, the sweet, the sugar, the fat, the salt, all the things that we're excited about. Um, we're also living in a culture where we're, on demand all the time and fast, we want it now, we need it now, we're working two jobs or whatever, and high high demand for families. Then we also have the concept of our schools and the cuts and the, you know, teachers only have six hours. I really think if you have six hours with my children, then why do they have homework? But the reality is, is they're locked into so many things. And then if you think about, well, health and education, that's one of the that is one of the areas of schools that are being cut. It's like um, the physical, um, it's like PE, it's the arts, it's the um, extracurricular activities. And so when we're making cuts in our schools, we're actually setting our kids up to sit in a desk, eat Cheetos, and that's where our families and our cultures come down and we have to say, okay, in the morning, and I'm the worst person to say this because my youngest is a carbitarian and he won't eat anything other than bread and bread, yes, crackers in the form of crackers. And so it's really hard for me to say, you need to eat your vegetables, you need to eat your fruit, You're, you need to um, eat your meats and your fruits because Coming around, you know, I deal with it with the family wise. He's he wants the the Twizzlers and the it's it's the 
it's a battle. And our culture, our society has framed it that way. I was, I was just, I was just getting a good point at the beginning of pointing to the things we should do. And we don't do it in a balanced way. I mean, it's, uh, you know, for instance, like exercise is a method to relate to a work. So do the work in mm-hmm. some jobs. Mm-hmm. And a musician may not get much exercise on, in their playing music instrument, sometimes, particularly, and yet they can contribute so much to society that they can, uh, they're vulnerable to getting hooked on a uh, lifestyle that is inactive. And they have to have some activity. Everybody, if they're going to uh, live well, and that means then you have to eat. Right, and so it's our call. It, it, it comes down to you and you being responsible for yourself. It's like, okay, you can be a musician, and you know that you have to sit, but it's like, I know I have to go and exercise. I know I have to go out and walk so many miles. I know I have to, you know, I know that every day I go in, to the grocery store, and it's every day because I also have two teenagers. And I am faced with the Twizzlers, and I have to choose, actively choose not to buy them every day. It doesn't matter so much as the discipline if you are the construction worker that's working 40 hours a week, and or if you're the piano player or the school teacher. It is an active decision that you have to make on how you are going to live your lifestyle. And it is... Yes, the construction worker maybe have a heads up because it's more manual labor. But on the other hand, it's he could be eating Big Mac because it's more convenient and inhaling twice as much as the junk. <laughs> Go ahead. So if the, the body is becoming insulin resistant, it can't absorb the energy. Mm-hmm. then that means that your muscles basically kind of decrease or just uh, get weaker, or how does that work? So, yeah, that becomes the complexity of the issue. Um, so as you become more insulin resistant, you can't feed the cells, they can't build the muscles, they can't see the whole trial effect. So that's where, you know, in the initially if we say, okay, let's prevent this. Let's eat right, take care of our pancreas, make sure that we can do that. That's all fine and dandy. Once we're past that point, then it's like, okay, what is my physician telling me to do? Um, if it's insulin, if it's metformin or whatever, um, what are the medications? What is my healthcare team telling me to do? my dietitian, and then exercise. You have to exercise to build the muscle. It's, it's a, a cycle. Um, on the other hand, it's harder after the fact than before. But literally, yeah, you become kind of... It's so what would your metformin to actually do then? <laughs> Does that, that take your body so it will absorb the energy in the cells? Well... Metformin helps helps the sugar break down in the in your blood vessels so that you are able to absorb the energy. So yes, it's a, it definitely um, it works much different than insulin, or I mean, there's different various types of insulin as well. But um, and it's great. Yeah, you'll notice like um, 
initially you lose weight, stuff like that, so you do increase your energy. But um, when you get down to the biochemistry of it, I'm going to tell you to talk to your doctor. <laughs> go online? Yeah, go online. Google it. <laughs> MD Web. Go ahead. Can you give us an example of, um, of say, a breakfast meal that would give us the things that we need for energy and protein and energy? Sure. Um, Tiffany, you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but I would definitely stick with the fruits, the whole grains, and what is natural. Um, stay away from the processed, because here's the other thing about the processed foods is they mess with your hormones, and insulin is a hormone, so it's one of those ones that um, gets man manipulated. Even if you're thinking about the fake sugar, even though you don't get the caloric intake of the fake sugar, you're still increasing your insulin needs, and so it still spikes. And then you're hungry later. So fresh foods, oatmeal is a good example of a whole grain. Don't go instant. It's been manipulated. <laughs> um, don't use the instant. Use, like, the old-fashioned. Um, like um, yogurt. I stay away from the high sugar content from the yogurt, um, but also to, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain in absolute terms. Or cottage cheese. And then Treva, like Treva, that's mm -hmm. bad for you? Well, Treva is like a... It's, it's a sweet bread. Sweet bread. It's, um, it's like cocaine comes from a cocoa plant, yeah. and it's very refined to get the cocaine, but Treva comes from... And then it'll spike your insulin or spike your blood sugars until you demand more insulin. Speaking of stevia, I know for a while they were touting agave, and now I hear that I guess it's not as good as it is. You have to be so careful. <laughs> I see all these, you know, you okay, uh, Facebook. You see the nice, pretty little lady on there, and they're marketing whatever fad diet or the um, – I don't know, the herb of the day. You have to be really, really careful because it's just marketing. It's just like the cheetos. They have natural cheetos, too, by the way. Oh, do they? Are they full of air? Mm -hmm. They're in a brown package. They're in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything that is in a brown package, double check it. <laughs> and just because it says organic on it, Check it. <laughs> Go ahead. So I'm basing you on the sugar content. Do you like recommend that I watch how many bowl of sugar I can have in one cup? Um, I stick to stuff that's more natural. So honey, um, applesauce. What else, Tiffany? <laughs> I warned her that there would be a lot of you. And I said, you should consult your healthcare team. But when it comes to baking, <laughs> this girl can cook some really good stuff. <laughs> fruit purees are really good. So applesauce, prunes, um, have chef prunes, bananas. Those are natural. What about coconut sugar? <laughs> it's, um, it's, a ta it's a tad bit better. It's got a little bit of fiber, but it's nothing. It's still sugar. And it's more expensive. Can you give us some ideas on, on foods so that we can 
start working on this and not going for the perfect of cookies. So it's going to be a mindset. It's mind that will matter. So think about, I'm going to eat an apple with the, the Oreo. <laughs> um, but you can dress it up a lot. Um, Tiffany has some great ideas. On <laughs> <laughs> well, literally, like, I would go to lunch with her, and I'm like, what is in that jar? <laughs> What? <laughs> so you have to recognize that an apple, like the mindset, an apple is not as sweet as a fiber one cookie. It's just drunk to begin with. Um, but if you get used to that taste, and it takes a good six months to a year. I mean, we talked about this for a long time. It just takes a long time to set that, to reset your palate. And so apples are... Mm-hmm. So you being a dehydrator, you know, it comes with sweet, but it's frozen, frozen grapes. I have frozen watermelons are in the freezer. Um, frozen bananas are, are the same thing. They're just these are they're tastier because they come from the grapes. But it's warmed up. So smoked pears, peaches in the microwave, apples in the microwave, and you're heating it also makes it taste sweeter. So just altering the way that you eat it. But and the reality is, once you get to the detoxing, it it's a relief, and you have this incredible amount of energy. And so it's not fighting to get up in the morning. It's like it's it's an it's amazing. It's a, high, a whole nother high. <laughs> well, Beth, you're also starting your first step to have it mean that you can eat the inside that sweet that in a different context of what you would get on the bread. Right, sweet, fat, salt. You might want to just post it on Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) Um, If you're an accountant, then you know getting ready for April is not going to have to be a sugar detox because you're already at a high stress level. So not not when you're having sandwich in the middle, but not when you when you have a couple weeks to not be on, to not be stressed out, would probably be the best time to look into it. Drinking a lot of water, making sure that you're exercising, and really. Also, get rid of the sugar out of your cupboards. <laughs> yes? Are you familiar with Yakun, Y-A-C-O-N? It's kind of the topic in Peru. It, it, you buy the sweets. The body won't metabolize it. It goes through you before it can, it can really take the bad stuff out of it. And the diabetics depend on it, but it won't last far. They know it won't go here. Y-A-C-O-N, Yakun. I don't know. <laughs> well, we're... we're uh, we're hurting the sunlight up here, even the sun is glowing, but so virtually all of us are vitamin D deficient. Uh, what effect does vitamin D deficiency have on our insulin intake? You asked ask excellent questions. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm even looking at my colleagues back there. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> that would be a great question, though, for your primary care provider. So country by country, there's a lot of differences in who has diabetes. What countries don't? What countries do? Why? Um, I go back to the culture and what we were raised with. Um, a lot of the countries that stick to the fruits, vegetables, the whole, um, the, a lot of the countries that still make their own food versus going to the restaurants and stuff like that have a lower rate of diabetes than the countries that are more industrialized, like America, where we have a high rate because we have food accessible and it's in mass quantities. Yep, exactly. 
Um, yeah. What was that? Um, cheese-like stuff? What was that? Cheese yeah, cheese product. Mm -hmm. Avoid that one. Yeah. Uh, I read someplace that uh, you can eat only cereal for breakfast and get big in the <laughs> Is that true? Um, well, you would you really can't say that if you only eat one thing, you're going to you're gonna be deficient in something if you choose only to eat one product. Um, so you would get some protein from milk if you chose to put that on your cereal. But um, I would have to agree, depending on what the other two or six meals were. Well, if you, that, yeah. But breakfast only. Still pink. <laughs> Choose water. <laughs> yep. Is there any relationship in the establishment between uh, five years insulin intake and our gut fauna? Since we're drastically changing given our food, can, can you? Is there something in our gut fauna because it's being compromised by the food we eat that would help us with uh, with the insulin? So I think that comes back to what is our normal flora in our gut and how, how best to make the environment the best optimal way to absorb the nutrients that we need. And so that's going back to saying let's eat the more, health, the more natural foods, the fruits, the vegetables, um, the not processed, um, not highly processed substances like um, the cheese product or corn stuff. Um, a lot of the candies and stuff that kids have, they're kind of made in a chemistry set. So avoiding those and trying to eat what's natural for our body, basically, for the normal flora in our body. Probiotics. Okay, probiotics. I wonder if probiotics are what, what make our gut fun more healthy to deal with triggers or what? What's your relationship with it? It's not going to fix But the foods that you choose to do that also promote lower blood sugar. Right. Dr. Watts, you just turned it for uh, information. That uh, ring a bell with you? Dr. Wiles says that we, we all should drink turmeric tea every day. Mm -hmm. Oh. And it, it has oh, to do with internal oh, inflammation. Oh, turmeric. Turmeric is a spice that helps lower inflammation, but it's in conjunction. I mean, you can't eat McDonald's and have turmeric tea. You That's not going to be helpful. You can't put turmeric on your uh, Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think you can overcome the Big Mac. Right. <laughs> yeah. One question. Um, we say in baking oatmeal cookies, we have a lot of sugar and a lot of flour. Is that just any suggested substitute for that? Applesauce? <laughs>
Well, I, I steer clear from anything that says genetically modified. <laughs> um, you don't even know. I mean, most of the things that you buy in the frozen food department are frozen vegetables that have been plowed, yet canned vegetables that have been plowed. Right. And this is counting the farms as Monsanto. Right. Well, and really, when we get down to it, it kind of there are a lot of things that our FDA approves that in other countries would not even be on the market. So, you know, we're, we're thinking as the consumer, and this is where a lot of the confusion happens. We're thinking we're going in and we're buying some frozen. Um, frozen blueberries, and we were thinking these are going to be really, really healthy, but hold and behold, if they've been genetic, genetically modified, that is going to mess with our hormones, insulin being one of them, and throw, cause inflammation <laughs> and throw our bodies all out of whack. So it's really hard for us. We are set up to almost fail by the food industry, the market, and even our own government for what they allowed to be put on the market. Um, yes, it's going to manipulate your body. If it's not actively, you know, if you're not actively looking at it where the, um, where your food is coming from, then you wouldn't even know. Um, if there isn't that safety barrier, am I pretty much on target? It's to tell you that warning that says, hey, don't buy this product because it's been genetically modified or anything like that because it's not advertised. And it's almost a disservice from our from our government with the FDA and their throw corn. <laughs> yes. So I know right now that there is a discussion in Washington D.C. about this uh, law that they some people want to put into effect that requires labeling that this you know is genetically modified. Who the opponents of this legislation are and how much money they have refers to the power of economic people to vote against, you know, right. the changes they just made. So they're really denying us so the information an, that we need. Right. And as an active consumer, yeah. write your congressman. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. So you see food aid program food aid? Yeah. All righty. Um, I have really enjoyed this conversation. I was incredibly nervous to give this lecture, but I love the questions afterwards. You make me incredibly nervous because you know more than I do. <laughs> but I am going to go catch a flight now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> To, there's been a lot of discussion for these types of topics, so I wanted to make sure that we had enough time. But I so much appreciate um, Kristen and I this whole summer. It's been fun trekking with you guys and learning right along with you uh, for the Healthy Living Lecture Series. So don't hesitate to contact Sunny Sessions, email, or stop by the office if you have suggestions for next year, speakers that you'd like to hear about, topics. I learned a lot about what interests our community through this. I, I know clearly, obviously, I think nutrition is the, is the best topic to talk about, but um, I know that there's a lot of others, so uh, they would appreciate your feedback. Um, and you can check out all of the lectures. They are somewhere on the World Wide Web, um, and you can access them um, going to uaf.edu backslash summers, and they will have the lectures uploaded there. So I appreciate this, and I hope um, we get some sun for all of you Tremulo and Paul. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Yes. I will. I will. So I think the thing with the gut flora is it's really interesting. I heard um,
A system that tests 10 things in your blood, twice in the computer program, keep track of what you eat, and eventually you can say, This test is today.